Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to design a furniture store in Figma. Since this is the most common request that I got in the comments. So without further ado, let's just jump in. I create an artboard first. And we need to find some fonts. Mostly want to use some serif fonts. So I'm just going to see a few that I have. So I found a few fonts that I like. This is a bit more stylish, so I think I'm just going with this one. This is the first view. So this is the hero section where the user will land on. It's very important. We want to make it visually appealing as much as we can. So I already have a basic idea to use floating girl with some floating furnitures and maybe other accessories. But first I'm going to search for some colors. Okay, I really like this deep manta. I'm going to look for a good yellow that I like. Okay, this looks good to me. I think to the background as well. Light yellow color. As for the hero image, I need to search some pictures. So I found these two images. I want to jump to Photoshop, quickly cut them out and modify the color of this chair because I want to be it yellow. And to cut out the girl, I'm going to use this select and mask tool. See if it does a good job. If it's not, probably we just need to tweak it a little bit more. So I'm just adding a mask to this layer and I want to add the dark background to see if the mask is correct. And I think it did a pretty good job on the hair. It's not perfect, but it's okay. So with an eraser tool and selecting the mask, I'm just going to fix these issues fast. fast. Okay, this looks fine to me. So I'm just going to open the furniture. So fortunately we have this furniture already cut out. I just want to modify the color. I want to make it yellow. So once we have our shape already drawn, I just want to add this a mask and I want to change the color. And if we change the blending mode to color, it's already switches and it preserves the textures as well. So that's what we want. We can start to move on and combine these two images together in a new file. I want to flip the images so they are facing the left, not the right. And I want to add some drop shadow underneath the girl because that will make it more realistic. So adding the shadow, I'm just going to use a simple technique. So that looks pretty good. I'm just combining the layers together and exporting them to see it in Figma. And I feel like we need to add some more accessories, furniture, so maybe tables, plants, a chandelier from the top. So I'm going to search for more images. I found these two and cut them out. So I'm going to add them to the scene, the chandelier on the top. I found this plant as well, so I'm going to paste it. That looks pretty good. What about a carpet? Creating an illusion that it's flying. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the yellow carpet that I wanted, but we can fix that with hue and saturation. Okay, something like this looks good. So I'm just going to add to our composition. And obviously this is not the perspective that I want, so I'm going to use some free transform and warp to transform it to a flying carpet. I'm not perfectly satisfied with the colors, so again with hue and saturation I'm going to brighten this. Okay, I think our hero section getting together, but I want to add some more shadows underneath the furniture and underneath the carpet as well. And I'm going to start with the carpet. I just feel that uh, the background is too flat. I'm trying to add some kind of gradient to make it more stylish. So I just created this ellipse shape and again I am adding the effect layer blur, pretty big one, actually 400. I just want to duplicate this and put it in the corner as well. Maybe this shadow is a bit too, too strong so I'm going to decrease the opacity 80%. And obviously we want to add the shadow under the chair as well. I'm still not totally satisfied with this scene, so I'm going to add some field-in shapes or stroke shapes. Okay, I'm starting to like it more. I think these shapes definitely help. Maybe I draw a drop shadow behind this, because now the armchair is blending into the background too much. 
Okay, I think we can move on to the next section. We already picked our font, which is Kostliga. So I'm just going to create a headline, a subheadline, and uh, some CTA buttons. And I think instead of this end word, we can use an ampersand. So let's add that. But this one is not that good looking, so I'm going to look for another font. I'm going to go with DM Serif. Outlining this stroke, and I want to make it bigger and put it behind them. And I want to add a different color. Blend it to the background, add a little title here as well. And underneath the headline, I want to add a subheadline that briefly uh, explains what this story all about. Okay, I feel that this is a bit of an overstatement. I think we can go with this subheadline for now. And for this area, I want to add CTA button with search input so users can quickly search for their favorite product. I want to add an arrow here behind the search word but I'm not going to draw it. I want to use a different approach. I'm going to search the web for arrow. I'm changing Roboto. I'm just outlining the stroke and now we have a shape. So I can make this bigger and I want to shorten this a little bit because it's too long. And I'm just simply adding back to the auto layout and changing the color to dark green and setting everything to the center inside the auto layout and we need an input field as well okay this looks pretty good but i want to fix some spacings and paddings i usually go with eight eight or four pixel grid uh, spacing so everything that can divide it by four or eight that works so that is our foundation for the spacing There is one very important step that we shouldn't miss to add a grid to our layout. So I'm going to set up a 12 column grid with 80 pixel width and 32 pixels gutter. And I'm just aligning the headline to the grid to the left side. So I think everything with this scene that we created is a bit too much. It's too big. So I'm going to select everything, shrink it down. And I am quite satisfied how it turned out. It looks pretty good. So to have a navigation is quite important. So let's just begin to design that. I want to add the basket icon to the right side of the menu so the user can quickly access to the basket and see what's inside them. So I just want to align our menu to the grid. Something is obviously missing here, the logo of this furniture store. So I'm just going to quickly draw it. Okay, so I added back this uh, logo that I that I created and now we can move on to the trust seal. So for this area, I want to add the mini review section with some profile pictures and some text. So I'm just creating simple shape and I'm using the plugin Unsplash to quickly add some portrait images. Around the pictures, I want to add some white stroke. If I give a negative spacing, they are going to stuck on top of each other, but I want to uh, modify the canvas stacking first on top. Just need some text here. And I just want to make sure that the padding is okay and the spacing is okay in between them. And here I, I want to add some numbers, satisfied customers or furniture shipped. I forget something to add here, so I'm going to create a little indicator that tells something about this product. I don't want to use more yellow because we are already using a lot. This is actually one of my favorite effects. I use this a lot in my videos. If you haven't noticed yet, we are done with the hero section. We can move on to the next part. I'm going to reveal the grid. I can see how many boxes I can place. So we can work with four. The first, I want to make it a bit bigger, maybe a four column and the rest can stay like this. I want to add a small headline that is saying featured products. And underneath the featured products, I want to add another text. 
I need to go to find some images for these boxes. So this is what I found. I'm going to place them back to our design. Yeah, and this one, the size is actually quite right. So I want to go with this size. The background of this panel is green. But again, I don't like the dollar sign, just as I didn't like the ampersand sign as well of this font. So I'm changing the font to DM serif. And since this is the most important part, I'm highlighting it with uh, our yellow. I want to add the button. In this product, I want to put everything into auto layout because I want to stretch them on this three column perfectly. And for the background of this button, I want to use a different color. Select the chair and select the text, create auto layout again. And I want to add the background and I added the 24 padding. To have this arch effect on the top, we need to just add a border radius. You need to add for the bottom as well, 24, the same as here. I want to lower the size of this text because it's too big. And this as well, and I'm going to use a different color, a grayish color for the design studio. And I want the text and the icon stretch with the box, so I just set them to field container. I'm just duplicating this box and replacing the images and text inside them. So I think it looks pretty good. I just want to add more space on the top. I'm just selecting all the panels and creating auto layout again. I want to turn on the grid. So I want this container to have the same vertical spacing. I'm just going to select each of them inside and set the width to fill container. This way, if I'm stretching the main auto layout container, it's going to stretch perfectly to the grid. In this case, I want to stretch to the right side, spacing between them to 32. Okay, so now we can turn off the grid, move this down. So in this area, I want to add some chevron buttons so the user can navigate through the products. So let's just do that, but I don't want to use some very standard, very sharp chevrons. So I want to create my own ones. I need to turn back the grid again. So I think this chevron looks pretty cool. It resonates with the brand, with these curves. We just need one more on the left side. Moving on to the next area, I think it will be very helpful for the user if they can choose from furniture categories. So let's say we have chairs, buffets and other categories. I already drew the icons for these categories, so I'm just going to place them in some colorful boxes. From the first box, I added auto layout and I also want to create a component. And selecting the icon inside, I just want to add an instance so we can quickly change to these other icons. Now the icon size inside this box is 40 pixels, but I want to make it bigger, so I'm going to change it to 80. And I'm just continuing to add more colors. I think these colors add some playfulness to the layout. I am going to create auto layout again and set the inside boxes to fill the container. So this way we can stretch to the side. I just want to add a categories title. And now we can move on to the next area. And I think this is a great place to upsell some services. For example, we have some interior designers that can help you design your dream home. So I'm going to add a headline here and some subheadline that explaining the service and the CTA button. For this area, I'm, I'm going to create another scene with some furnitures. I just need to search for some pictures. I found this PSD file on Freepik and I think it's perfect because this armchair is already yellow, so we don't need to change the color of it. But we have some problem with the shadows, so I'm just going to recreate that in Figma. Okay, so now we have our scene. We can move on with the headline and the subheadline. I just want to add the CTA as well and I'm just going to copy the CTA that we already have in the hero section. I also want to add a little title here. I think around these objects we can draw some dashed lines that implies that it is a planning service. I even want to add the mouse cursor here and some icons, maybe a pencil and a ruler. 
Okay, actually this turned out pretty good. I just want to add this D shape that we used here and here as well. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it back behind the armchair. What if I add a very soft drop shadow behind this D? I just want to make this D a bit bigger. Moving on to the next section, I want to add some more products here, but this time I want to display them a bit differently. Probably I'm going to use this D shape that we have here as well, this arch. I found these two pictures, so I'm going to place them back to the layout and I'm going to play with the boxes. That actually looks very cool. I'm really satisfied with this layout, but I want to add something obviously to the left side. So I'm going to create some headlines and subheadlines. For the next section, I want to use some separation. So I'm adding a white shape. I want to move it behind these boxes, but this has an opacity. So I'm going to change that to fill. That looks pretty good and for this white shape I want to add the drop shadow. I'm just going to create a global effect from this one and now if I go to the global styles it's there so I just need to click on it. At this point I'm just moving the boxes and changing the position of the text. We can add our beloved D shape back but this time with a stroke. There is no website video the testimonial section, so in this next area I want to place some boxes with some ratings, profile pictures, names and some small reviews and I want to place them inside a slider. I want to create an auto layer from all of these elements. So first I'm adding auto layer to the stars and then to the name and the stars and then a picture and with the text and finally to the review text as well. And the reason I created this auto layout because I can easily add padding to the sides. I want to add the white fill and we have this drop shadow that I'm going to use and for the border radius, I'm using 16. I just want to make sure that the review text inside with is set to field container and the height is set to hug contents. So this way I can copy and paste it and I'm creating auto layout again. And this way, if I resize the main auto layout, the inside containers are stretching perfectly. I'm just setting the spacing between them to 32 and I want to add some chevrons. But we already have that in the second section, so I'm just going to copy them. Turning back the grid to align everything perfectly and I'm selecting the main auto layout and the chevrons and align them to the center. And there's only one thing is missing here to add the title for this area. And finally to finish the layout we need to add the footer. I want to add some text about purchase, services, client and social and I want to use a dark green background. And to make the spacing between them equal I want to add auto layout. For this area we can add our logo. And for the final touches I'm just fixing the spacing and adding some gradient to the background. That's it guys, we just finished the furniture store design. I hope you liked it and learned something new today. If you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos as well. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.